This week on the Modified World, I'm going to be teaching you what you need to know about eyebrow piercings. So stay tuned. Ah, welcome to the Modified World. It's the weekly web series about body modification. The people who do it, the people who get it, why of course it matters. I'm your host. I'm the senior piercer. I'm here at the world-renowned Pangea Piercing. We're located in beautiful, sunny downtown Ann Arbor, Michigan. Purvey internet wackiness to all the people who will let me purvey it to them. That's a fact. And this week, well, this week, a nice happy volunteer let me film while well, he we did his eyebrow piercings and uh, allow me to do a little bit of education for you guys. As far as the history of eyebrow piercings goes, you know, I do not believe that there's an ancient historical precedent for it or anything, you know, like septum piercings or lip piercings or nose piercings or whatever like that. I'm pretty sure that it was something that came about maybe the 70s or 80s. Not really 100% sure on it. That said, though, I know that they enjoyed a period through the 90s and early 2000s of heightened popularity. Yeah, it kind of died off for a while, but, you know, starting to see a few more of them here and there. So I figured it'd be a good opportunity to talk about them. As far as uh, some of the scarier things that you've heard about them, you know, I'm sure that at some point or another you've heard that they could possibly paralyze your face, which is... Uh, I guess it's kind of understandable where somebody could believe that, but it's a completely ridiculous notion. Your eyebrows, the tissue is thick there, designed to protect your, your ocular bone, you know, the, your eye socket. And you've got hair on them to prevent sweat from running down into your eyes. Anybody who's ever shaved their eyebrows off knows exactly what I'm talking about. So needless to say, it is a possible thing to get pierced. Now, this is where anatomy comes in though too because it is helpful even though everybody has a little thicker tissue up there it's helpful to have defined brow ridges and, you know somewhat deep set eyes but craggy brow it's kind of a good thing having really delicate features and shallow set eyes yeah it doesn't mean that you can't get it done it just means that you might have a little bit harder time healing it and have to pay a little bit more attention as far as placement on them goes i always like to kind of draw an invisible line from the corner of the mouth up through the corner of the eye and then extend that on through the eyebrow and use that to be able to find my angle so it's generally aesthetically pleasing relatively balanced to the face now as far as depth goes that comes into actually feeling around for tissue you want it to be between the you know the subcutaneous layer and the dermis which Honestly, it's kind of hard to describe exactly how that feels, but if you roll around your eyebrow a little bit, you can kind of feel where the tissue starts to separate a little bit. You can feel the kind of thicker tissue on the outside, and you can somewhat feel the transition between those layers of skin. And that's going to be where you want to have your entry and exit points on there, because that's where your body wants to have that anyway. Might as well just install it in there in the first place. Don't try to, don't think you're going to put them extra deep and let them migrate to the point that they like to be. No, it's better to just proper placement from the get-go. As far as jewelry on those goes, yeah, you have a couple of options. Well, basically you can go with a curved barbell or some sort of ring. One way or the other, they need to, they need to fit appropriately. With rings, you'll find that... Uh, they do flop around and move a lot more, and so you'll find some piercers that are really against the idea of ever using them. I've seen quite a bit of success with them, even though I know they're not my preferred piece of jewelry. I always like to start them with a, with a curved barbell rather than a ring. But, you know, if you're going to have a ring, though, that's cool. Definitely does need to be appropriately sized, though. I like to avoid super thin wires, like 18 gauge. I like to do 16, sometimes 14 even. Um, you know, and anywhere from 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths, eh, it's kind of hard to tell starting out, but you definitely don't want any, I've seen some just god-awful big rings online that people have tried to put in there, and of course with no success. And the opposite is true too, too small of a ring is just as problematic. As far as technique on that goes, well, I personally, I freehand them, 
Of course you can clamp them if you need to. It's not a problem. It's just a matter of, of course, you don't want to go crushing the tissue. Clamps are not a problem. Tools are not a problem. The misuse of them though is. And I find it when people lock stuff on there to cause a lot of a lot of swelling and whatnot. So if you are going to use clamps, use them lightly. If not, it's a pretty easy piercing to freehand and just brace up in the back and almost, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, it feels like just like sewing almost. They're pretty, pretty simple. Not a, lot of, not a lot of sensory nerves right there. You know, once again, like I discussed earlier about what the function and purpose of an eyebrow is in the first place, well, that tissue's tough and designed to take a beating. It's not a problem if you go ahead and poke it a little bit and you'll find that they really don't hurt. As far as aftercare on those goes, my standard basic aftercare that you've, I'm sure you've watched the video for is exactly what I recommend for folks. Just real simple. Leave it alone. If it gets dirty, clean it. If not, just rinse the crusty stuff off there and you'll generally be good to go. Healing time, eh, anywhere from, I don't know, two, three months, six months. Something like that, you know? It's all gonna vary depending on people, their climate, the, how they take care of it, you know? The, a lot of factors, but I would, I would generally expect them to be done and good to go in anywhere three to six months. Mm, maybe longer, maybe shorter. Your mileage may vary. Now, of course, this tutorial is not intended to necessarily teach you how to do an eyebrow piercing. It's more intended for you to be able to see what it is that you're looking at when you go and get that eyebrow piercing. And of course, when you're considering any kind of piercing, I don't care if it's a, an earlobe or the most complicated thing you can think of, always seek out a legitimate professional piercer. Thanks, thanks, babe. Awesome. Woohoo! What do you think? I love it. That's sweet. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We show the folks at home, of course you don't want to touch it. That's the number one thing that yeah, when I'm getting you an infection. We call these, well these are gloves, but uh, those things on the end of your arm, my pers that, that thing, I call that a dirty <laughs> beater. So <laughs> no, keep your, keep your, <laughs> oh man, he said that not me. So keep your dirty <laughs> beaters off your piercings and you'll be a happier person. Pro tip from your Uncle JC. That was my show this week. I, I hope you enjoyed it and possibly learned something. Maybe even remotely entertained. I don't know. I do this all the time. Generally, try to do a video a week. So, you might want to throw me a subscription. Doesn't hurt, doesn't cost anything. Hey, you know, of course, stop back by next week. We'll have another episode of The Modified World. That was good.